And basically what the bike was doing is occasionally starting and occasionally not starting. So with the starter button, occasionally you'd get, uh, it would start like normal, it'd turn over like normal, and then occasionally it would just click and you just hear the relay and that was it. Um, but it would bump start fine and it would run fine. So here's a bunch of the things that I went through to figure out what was going on. The ignition was working fine. Um, I thought it might have been something weird with that, but since the bike ran fine, I kind of eliminated that. Um, my next thought was the starter button, but every time I pushed the button, you could hear relay noise. So I figured the button's probably fine. I thought the clutch switch might have something to do with it. So I unplugged it. It's right under here. There's a little tab you can push up from underneath with your finger, if you can see that. And then this plug will just come off. And I just shorted the plug with a paper clip um, to to make sure it had continuity and it did the same exact thing. Um, just clicked with the relay. And I also checked the ground, which goes straight to the motor. You can trace it along the wiring harness and it goes to the back of the motor. You can actually see it. Um, if the tank is up, I think I was able to see it through there. Um, and it was clean and tight. It looks like it had never been messed with. And that was what was really weird is this bike doesn't have a lot of miles and it's not been um, molested and, and messed with a lot. The starter relay is hidden under the tail back under here. You have to get it off of, there's a little plastic tab that sticks under here and you just kind of pop it upward and you can pull it out um, without taking your whole tail off. I mean, it's easier with the tail off, but it's annoying to get it off. So make sure both of these are connected to the right side the the aftermarket unit doesn't have labels but the the oem unit does oem has a b on the left and an m on the right and i believe that's battery and motor i assume um because this is the battery on the left side and the motor will go to here starter motor um but as i said this unit didn't have it labeled so make sure those are connected right make sure your fuse is good um, which it is, but I wasn't going to think it was the fuse anyway because unless it was maybe a corroded fuse, but because it was intermittent, so usually fuse is off, it's never going to work. The relay was okay and it is clicking like normal, so that was fine. And the battery terminals were obviously, that was like the first thing I checked, that was fine. Battery, I switched with the battery uh, with a known good battery and it didn't do anything different, so that was fine. Um, but then this wire right here goes down to underneath to your starter motor, which is located right in here. It slips into this little hole in the back. I was able to take a jumper cable from the top connection, the positive on the motor, and I just linked it directly to the positive on the battery and I got zero, I got, there was nothing. And then I took it, the motor out, cause I figured it was bad, not working. And I checked it um, again, directly to the battery just to make absolutely sure. And there was still nothing. So that's where we're at. And you can see back there, there's two little raised parts of the case, and that's where the two bolts go go in from the top vertically. And they're kind of annoying to get to, but I was able to get it out um, just by just getting the tank and lifting the tank. You can see that I did remove the fuel line, and I did remove this. Uh, you can see that bracket that's off there in the back by a little exhaust servo motor. You just take one 10, 10 millimeter bolt out, and then you can kind of get that bracket out of your way and you can get a little bit more room for your hand to get back under there because it's kind of tight. Um, going to be annoying to get back in, but it was doable without taking anything else off. So if I can avoid taking a bunch of stuff out, I usually will. I'm going to see if I can get this thing to work because it seems like it's not doing anything. I shorted from the battery, positive to here and grounded on the body. And I got nothing direct from the battery. So I assume this is the problem. I'm gonna see if I can take it apart and clean it and maybe it'll work. Okay, so I took the two bolts out right here and a bunch of dust, all of this fell out as I separated the housing. And you can see this is kind of dirty. That should be like kind of bright colored copper, but it's full of just dust just from use. So I'm just gonna see if I can kind of clean it out and maybe like really lightly sand these to get a little bit better electrical connection, just see what happens. So I took another look at this and it looks like 
this contact is actually stuck down when I, I looked at it again and because they're supposed to be spring loaded like that and that one is just down so it's not even touching <laughs> so I don't know if it'll come back maybe the spring inside broke I don't know so I'm using an electronic cleaner which leaves no residue and is okay for electronic stuff and you see all the black powdery junk that I've sprayed out and this I kind of just lightly sanded um, and then scotch brighted a little bit using some of the electronics cleaner as kind of a lube to sand it with. It's moving more now and I think it's sticking out a little farther than it was. Got it kind of moving. It was not really moving at all. Oh, oh, it's coming back. It just came back. So this motor actually might come back from the dead. And I'm just kind of moving it to get corrosion out of the way so it can move how it's supposed to. And both of those are free. This one's been fine. So this thing might actually work. I figured I should note that when you put this motor back together, if you're doing this, uh, there is a little notch on the little housing. And if you look over here, you've got uh, three little tabs that are kind of part of the assembly. And then you've got this one oddball tab right here um, on the left there. And that's what's going to align into the housing here so just make sure those are mating together when you put it back together so i kind of just rest the two contacts against this copper section and just kind of push them towards the center so you can align the shaft into a little bushing in the back and i did put a tiny dab of grease on there just a little bit since i just cleaned anything out of there that might have been in there so i mean it's bronze it's probably fine it's sort of a self-lubricating bushing but i figure it can't hurt Okay, we've got a tab here, right there, and we've got our notch over here. So I'm going to align those approximately, kind of put the copper against the contacts, and then just, you see it's kind of off-center right now. Um, and we'll just kind of push it, push the contacts in to align it, and it should go into the bushing, and then that will go together like so and now we're back together okay with any luck i'm going to test this and it's just going to burst into flames because i didn't get all the contact cleaner out um, i did take an air compressor and blast in here and try to evaporate anything that was left over it's quick drying but when you have that much in there it takes a little while so i've got a wire onto my positive and i'm going to check the motor and if it doesn't work i'm going to be really disappointed and probably go and cry in my room. I'm just going to touch the housing to the negative of a battery. So I'm holding it onto the negative literally. And it'll probably spin out of my hands if it's all goes well. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. Definitely did not get that before. We are in business. All right, getting ready to install it. Uh, I just kind of cleaned up the o-ring section a little bit and i'm going to put a tiny bit of oil around the o-ring so when i slip it in the housing it'll go in nicely and seal and we'll then see if uh, the bike will live again okay i've got a trusty screwdriver holding up the gas tank for me and now we're going to take the motor and try to finagle it into its little, its little home try not to get dirt on the end of it This is kind of difficult with one hand. <laughs> All for the sake of YouTubes. Eh. Sorry, I'm trying to watch what I'm doing and not the video. Okay, I'm gonna try with two hands. <laughs> I had to do is actually pull it out again and just slightly rotate the starter gear because it wasn't meshing with the gear inside. It was stuck and didn't want to go in, so I rotated a hair and then it went in fine. Now the fun part of trying to get the bolts into those two holes right there. Yay. Once it goes in all the way and you're sure the motor is in place, I did have to actually slide it back a hair to get the bolts to line up in the back. My starter relay is back underneath there and I've got my worthless charcoal canister hoses tied up and my battery terminals are now on tightened. So, I just tried it three times in a row and it worked flawlessly. So let's see what happens. Full clutch and... Ammo! We're fixed!